Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Big Vale, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to crush bases with Queen Charge Rocket Loons. Now this attack strategy, it's actually really, really fun. And while you may think it's quite similar to a Queen Charge Lalo, it actually is nothing like a Queen Charge Lalo. So for Queen Charge Lalo, you're looking to try and create pathing for your Lalo to follow and to flow through the base. With this, you're looking to just try and get as much value as you possibly can with your King, Queen, RC and Warden plus your Siege Machine, which I tend to use the Flame Flinger. Now, you may think it's weird that I said the Warden, and the reason I say the Warden is because you don't use it with your Rocket Loons. It's almost useless with the Rocket Loons because they tend to get ahead of it, and you usually will surgically deploy the Rocket Loons. So the Warden will more often than not only be covering two at a time anyway. So I actually like to send my Warden with my Royal Champion. Sounds a little bit wild, but trust me, it works. So before I get into mapping out the uh, attack and how I went about this, what I'll do, I'll point out the key threats when you're looking at a Queen Charge Rocket Loon. So of course, Town Hall, that's always gonna be one. Town Hall, it's a massive threat, mainly because if you don't get it, you're gonna one star, but also because that Giga Inferno, Giga Poison, Giga Bomb, there's so much Gigas going on, it's very dangerous. So Town Hall has to go down. Eagle Artillery, also a threat, plus we've got sweepers in here which can be a little bit of a pain. Not as bad with rocket loons as they are with normal balloons, but still, you want to try and deal with them. We've also got scatter shots here and here, multi infernos here and here, and multis are a uh, bit of a nightmare for rocket loons, so you want to try and take them out as best as you can. Usually that's where your freezes will go. If not on multis, then probably on the scatter shot. And of course, you've got the defending heroes, the air targeting ones anyway, Queen, Royal Champion. So they're your threats, guys. If you can take out as many of those as possible with your Sui, with your Siege Machine, and with a couple of surgically placed Rocket Loons, the end of the attack should be really straightforward. So um, yeah, what we'll do, we'll talk through how I broke this base down and then we will watch the replay and hopefully by the end of it, you'll have sort of an idea of how this works. And of course, don't worry, we do have a few more replays to show to you afterwards. So this isn't all you're gonna see guys. We're gonna have a few different base types to demonstrate on. So we've already talked about this, Town Hall has to go down. So we're actually gonna Queen Charge into the Town Hall with support from a few balloons and a freeze spell and a rage, of course. We've got that single Inferno in front of the Town Hall that is gonna be a major pain for us. So we use what we have to to get through there, easy enough. We're gonna drop our Flame Flinger down at six o'clock. So the Flame Flinger is gonna be working away here, chipping away at the defenses on the inside of the six compartments. And while all that's going on, this is all happening simultaneously because we don't want a time fail. We're going to send our king in to try and take out as much of this compartment as possible. So the king's going to be looking to try and take out Scattershot and Queen as priorities. We talked about the Scattershot and Queen being two major threats. The king can deal with them. All right, so, so far, we've taken out Town Hall Comp, 6 o'clock Comp, and the... 5 o'clock comp, 4.30, 5 o'clock, whatever, same thing. Okay, so good start so far. That means as far as key defenses go, we still have the Eagle, Sweepers, RC, Scattershot, and two multi-infernos left standing. That's not too bad, honestly. That's not too bad at all. Now, the Clan Castle is in the core as well, so we do have to deal with that also. Always best to deal with that with your Sui if you can. So what we're going to do... We're going to use our wall breakers. We have three of them. So we're going to use one to open up this wall just behind the town hall. Because doing that, the queen will be able to reach over the wall, take out the sweeper and the eagle artillery, plus pull out that clan castle. So that clan castle will get pulled too. So, okay. So now, not only have we taken out that, 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 we've also taken out that too. So now we're talking, guys. We already have like that gorgeous L shape that you'd be looking for if you were doing a Lalo, but again, we're not doing a Lalo, so the L shape's kind of irrelevant. So what we're going to do from here, the Queen Charge is still rocking it, she's doing her thing, our Flame Fling is still no doubt plowing through the base. Now, we need to focus on what to do with the Royal Champion and the Warden, who synergize so, so well in this attack. 
then it's really simple. We know we need to take out the defending RC and the scatter shot. They're our priorities here. So we're just going to send the uh, RC in with the warden from over here. Easy. The RC and warden will work through these defenses with the warden's ability, RC ability, and a rage spell if you need to. Plus, you know, if you've got any freezes left over, you're in viz, go for it, rock and roll, guys. You can probably take out, in fact, you can definitely take out all of that. And you can then move on and maybe, I mean, I do, just so you know, guys, that's why I'm saying it. You maybe even take out that multi-inferno there in that wizard tower. And when I say maybe, I mean absolutely, definitely, you can do that. So, from there, guys, that is all of our Sui work, all of our flame flinger work done. All that's left to do is just to deploy the uh, rocket looms. Now, if you want to know how to deploy them, very easy, much easier than it is with normal Lalo or with hybrid or any of the other queen charge attacks that I've shown you. Typically all you'll be doing is dropping two rocket wounds on each defense. Simple as that. They do have, I believe, greater death damage and I think they also have a higher DPS as well, just without the death damage. So really, really potent troops. Two per defense as a rule, and then if you've got any left over, send more in to the high value defenses. So, in this case, it'll probably be the multi inferno over here. Okay, so we've talked enough. I feel like it's time to press play, so let's rock and roll, guys. Okay, so we're moving in. Queen is going to get dropped in after we send in a couple of balloons. These balloons are there to tank the single while we deploy a queen, our healers, and get a rage down. Balloon going over. Now we could send the rocket loon into the single, and there we do. We do. Beautiful. That's damage on that single inferno right away, which means the queen can one-shot it. Not mandatory, but the perk of doing that is that you're finding any initial seeking air mines that you wouldn't otherwise get with normal balloons. So that's that, that rocket loon. Beautiful work. Beautiful. So we've got a king working his way up. He's going to move into the queen and scatter shot compartment, as we talked about. Flame Plinger, it's doing its thing in the 6 o'clock comp. Meanwhile, the Queen's actually tanking for that mortar, which is why it was safe to do that. King takes out the Queen. He's going to move in towards the Scatter, and actually the King pulls out the Clan Castle. So we get that earlier CC pull than expected, which means the Queen can deal with it in her own time. She doesn't have to do it while she's stepped up trying to take out the Eagle. So you know what? I'm calling that bonus points. We've got our Wall Breaker. Oh, we didn't get into the Eagle compartment. I thought I did. Okay, I tried to, guys. I tried to get into the Eagle comp. That's Big Veil being a big noob. So apparently I swagged one of my wall breakers. So the Queen doesn't get into the core, which is a shame, but not the end of the world. And you know, I wouldn't be showing you this attack if I didn't three star it. So Queen ain't going to get into the core, but it's fine. She's now going to join up, take out the defending Royal Champion, while our Royal Champion and Warden can keep pushing on through. Fire off the Eternal Tome just before the RC's ability was forced. Rage goes down because we want to get that scatter shot down. We're prolonging the RC ability as long as possible. And for no other reason than I feel it's just more value on the back end. So RC now moves on to the multi inferno and look at what we've got here, guys. The Queen actually does eventually get through to the Eagle. So Eagle's going to go down. Now we can start to deploy these rocket loons. You notice I'm putting a couple on each defense. And we are starting to shred the base, guys. Free spell goes down on the Wizard Tower and Multi because they're honestly our only threats. And now the net is closing in. Our Rocket Loons are wrapping around those final defenses. Queen gets into the core. And from here, I should have dropped my cleanup in a lot earlier. What you should really be doing with this attack is starting to deploy your cleanup really, really early on. As soon as the coast is clear. Just because otherwise you're at risk of a big time fail. And this attack... You have got potential to time fail, although you don't really need to drop the rocket loons in until you've got about a minute, a minute and ten seconds left. Time fails can still be a factor if it doesn't all go to plan. But you can see here, it absolutely went to plan. We crushed Putty's base, and that was all from just getting insane Siri value, beautiful siege value, and um, just, yeah, using the rocket loons as essentially a cleanup troop. Really, really strong and a lot of fun to do. Next up, we've got an anti-3 base, guys. And rather than walking through it before we hit play, I'm just going to hit play now. And then you're going to see how I break it down. So we go with a rocket balloon and a normal balloon over towards the mortar at 6.30. In hindsight, I should have also done the same over at 5 as well on that mortar because you'll see later on. It causes me a little bit of grief. 
but Flame Flinger dropped in at six and the intent here is to one try and clear out the six o'clock compartment so the queen doesn't wander but also to move up and take out the scatter shot over at four o'clock meanwhile queen's going to charge into the town hall so we're going to get the town hall down plus a little bit of extra value no additional high value targets so we're not going to take out any multis scatters or anything but we do get rid of an air expo a couple of builder huts the air defense and the warden and of course you know warden we know he hits like a sledgehammer so getting him down as early as possible it can only be a good thing, surely. Anyway, Flame Fling is doing its thing over at 6. At this point, I could have probably dropped a couple of minions in behind it. This is, again, one of my flaws, guys. I often forget to drop clean up in when I'm supposed to. Freeze on the single because it was taking out my queen. And now the Flame Flinger is working its way towards that single Inferno. So it won't be a threat for too much longer. Okay, so we're just rocking and rolling through, trying to keep, uh, keep this Queen Charge alive for as long as we possibly can. In fact, the Flame Flinger just ignored the single Inferno. Rip me. Luckily, the Queen's walking away from it, though. And we are getting some residual damage onto it. So is that single actually going to go down or is it somehow going to hang in there? No, I think it's going down. Is it? It does. There we go. That's how great the Flame Flinger is, guys. That residual damage lasts for so long. And even though that mortar that we talked about earlier did take out my flame flinger, thankfully, we still had those troops to come out of it. So the uh, dragon rider and the balloons, meaning the scatter shot did go down anyway. We use now an RC and warden combination coming in from 11 because I want to really take out that top compartment. That 12 o'clock compartment's where the real threat is. My queen's about to go down. Could I have protected her better? Yeah, absolutely. I could have done. I could have frozen up the expo that was targeting her but uh, that was just a miss on my part. King working his way, doing some cleanup from six all the way up towards three o'clock. Now I didn't really have a specific application for that King. What I should have done maybe is drop the King over at like 2.30 and just broken him into the Eagle compartment. That would have just made things a little bit easier, but you know what? Our rocket loons are more than capable of clearing that compartment on their own. They are absolutely shredding it in fact. We do still have that core multi to worry about, but we've got our RC with ability still. And that RC with ability, we know how potent she is. Fires it off, damages the multi. That means the multi will go down if you just blow on it a little bit. And job done, guys. The cleanup is doing its thing. And we get another three star with this insanely strong attack strategy that I actually really like mostly. And it sounds a bit weird because you know how I am with my pathing. I love to create beautiful pathing. But I love this because you don't need to create pathing. You just need to get value wherever that value may be. Find it, get it, crush the base. Simple. Now in for our final friendly challenge replay. It's another box base and this is one that I actually gave away on the channel. So uh, kind of embarrassing that I'm crushing it. But you know what? It's a showcase of how good this attack actually is. So we're um, dropping our Flame Flinger in at 6. Again, we're looking for value here, guys. So we're looking to create a uh, bit of a path here, I suppose, but also really just to take out a chunk of defenses. And 6 o'clock was the safest place that I could see to drop it in. Queen is dropped in with the intent of trying to get her to go in towards that Town Hall and take that down. So we're going to get the Town Hall down, a couple of Expos and Air Defense. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. Even the Royal Champion's going to get taken out by my Queen, all being well. Queen ability goes off. That was a big mistake from me. I, I kind of screwed up then, guys. In fact, there's no kind of about it. I was very careless with my Queen, and ultimately, that led to me losing her ability really on early on, and that could have cost me, you know? We know that having the Queen ability for the duration of the attack is not critical, but very important to maintaining that queen's life and stopping her from going down prematurely. So we get the CC coming out. This one's a trashy CC, so we can easily deal with it with a poison, but it does hold us away from that single Inferno. So it does mean we need to invest more freezes than we probably otherwise would have done. Queen steps up, single's gonna go down. And while the Flame Fling is still doing its thing, taking out a single Inferno on the lower side, We've got the king working around from one o'clock and up and around queen, getting deeper and deeper into the base. We've got our rocket loons coming in, just chipping away at those last two defenses over on the four or five o'clock side. And at this point, you can see I'm starting to surgically deploy my, uh, my rocket loons. They're starting to get dropped in. I'm not deploying them all at once. This isn't the full main part of the attack, 
But this is me just trying to use them to create a little bit of pathing for my royal champion, for my king, for my queen. And also just to pick off some defenses that are kind of isolated, that are easily accessible. So now we get the rocket loons coming in, two per defense. And you see how quickly they move in, guys. Those initial few seconds are absolutely insane insane they just sweep through the base like like jets they're like fighter jets the rc with the warden really came in clutch there guys you can see the rc is still standing she got us a ton of value too rocket balloons are gonna just basically clean stuff up now we've got all our cleanup in play and we've got one spare super wall breaker left over because yeah why not <laughs> why not but yeah this again it's um it may have you asking the question do we really need to have three super wall breakers and again my answer is not always and if you are in a war situation that time in that sort of scenario you can get away with maybe switching it up a little bit maybe take take it down to one if you only need one but it's always worth having all three just for legends league so if you are going to be using this comp or tampering with it try to keep those three super wall breakers in there at least for legend league hits from, I promise you, you'll be thanking me later. And just to wrap things up, we're going to go into a couple of Legend hit replays, just so you can see this working in Legends, and kind of just to prove that I don't just do friendly challenges and post the three stars. So it is also effective in your Legend Day, and I'm going to be taking this into Legend Day for at least the first couple of days of the new season. So you can see here we've got the Flame Flinger dropped in at 6, we took out the Mortars that were guarding 6 o'clock so we could do that, and we inadvertently also pulled a couple of Teslas out, so that's kind of ideal. Queen Charge, we've got her trying to move in towards the Town Hall. Now, I know what you're thinking, it's a bit of a risky place sending the Queen into the Town Hall, just because it's guarded by 4 Expos, the Queen, Royal Champion, 5 Builder Huts, uh, I mean, you know, it's not a nice place, it really isn't. But you know, the way I see it, if we can get rid of all of that value really early on, you can't go wrong, can you guys? We're off to a winner. So we pull a Tesla. I mean, we'll move away from the plane bling. We know what that's doing. That's just chipping away at six. Queen is moving in slowly but surely. We're using rages to keep her up. You know, you have to do that with queen charges. You can't get away with just, you know, letting the queen roll and hope for the best. We've got the king moving in. He's going to try and creep in towards the scattershot at three o'clock. Because that's where the real threat is right now. Town Hall goes down thanks to an invis dropped in. And that was to really deflect the Queen away from the skeletons that had been pulled. Super Warbreaker moves in. Freeze goes down on the Royal Champion. And we lose the Queen ability. But the Raged Up Healers does mean that we are actually still keeping that Queen alive. And the Queen is pushing through. Freeze on the scatter shot because it had locked onto my healers. That is the last thing you want to happen, guys. You do not want to be losing your healers at a critical point like this in the queen charge. All right, King's moving through to the scatter shot eventually. RC is now joining in. And you'll notice I forgot to send my warden with the royal champion. Yeah, I made a new play there, guys. I forgot to use the warden with the RC. As it happens though, we've already taken out what I would consider to be most of the uh, the dangerous stuff, the stuff that heroes may struggle with. So we've got the RC pushing through, poison dropped in, the pups are gonna go down, and now we can start deploying the rocket loons to support this queen and try and keep her alive for the duration of the attack. So plenty of rocket loons sent in towards the scatter shot, that scatter is gonna go down, beautiful work. We've got more rocket loons being deployed surgically around the base you can see i'm dropping a couple on each defense they're all closing in and we're just wrapping around the base here we've deployed all our rocket loons but we've got a cleanup all in play tons of rocket loons in the core we've got the queen still up because we protected her by sending some early rocket loons in and uh yeah i mean i'm calling this a pretty big success so we did lose our real champion i think it was the king that took her down but you know it was always going to happen i guess and not the end of the world when we're finishing it so so strongly so look at all the troops we've got guys absolutely ridiculous and that is a crushed base gg well played bvop and for our final replay another legends one guys we have a very odd looking base it's kind of split in two with uh, some stuff in the middle of that split but what i love here is that we've got all four expos again over by the town hall which means that we are free to flame flinger over at three o'clock a couple of rocket wounds in on the mortar just to make sure we're free to do that and the flame flinger can get almost unlimited value there 
Queen dropped in over at five and the intent there, of course, is to get the Queen to wrap around towards that Town Hall and try and take down everything on that side. So in an ideal world, we'll take out, as far as key structures go, the Town Hall, Defending Queen and two scatter shots plus both sweepers. Do we manage it? Well, that's another story, guys, but that is the intent here. So we've got a Rage drop down to keep that Queen alive. The Flame Fling is doing wonderful, wonderful work over at four o'clock and it can now move towards a single Inferno. So that Flame Flinger is starting to creep into the base, getting deeper and deeper, getting us more and more value. CC pulled out, it's Super Minions. Super Minions coming out, Poison easily deals with them. So that Rage over the Queen and Healers combo with the Poison will always get you through that CC. You never have to worry about Super Minion CC, guys. Promise you, I promise. Right, so Queen is making headway. She's got one scatter shot down. She's getting close to that defending Queen. We've got three freezes and we have an invis still. So we've got plenty of spell support. King now moving into the cannon. And what I want him to do is wrap around and go towards the air defense right here. And that's what he does. Air defense and royal champion. And you can see the path that he's going to follow will take him towards the eagle artillery and right through the middle of that central compartment up towards the top air defense and archer tower couldn't be any better guys it really couldn't so we now we've got the rc and warden dropped in over at 12 they're going to move in and you can see we're dismantling this base beautifully with the queen charge and suey and you know i i know you're probably watching this and thinking how is he getting all of this value trust me it looks more impressive than it actually is to execute this it's really not that difficult so we did lose the queen there, but we've left with a very small compartment to deal with. So now we can just wrap our rocket wings around it. We've got three more to send in. Notice we do still have the multi up, but it's going to go down. It's gone. And defenses are pretty much all done for, guys. We've got a couple more balloons sending. We've got a cleanup dropped in. Again, much later than it should have been. I'll never learn. I really will never learn, guys. That cleanup could have been dropped in about 30 seconds ago, but what else? We're still going to triple here, aren't we? Super Wall Breakers again, kind of swagged, but again, doesn't really matter too much. They could have come in handy. The fact that they didn't just means that, what, we have, what, one or two less Rocket Loons? Not a big deal. And the base is crushed. So again, it's all about getting that insane value with your rocket, uh, with your rocket launcher, with your flame flinger, with your queen charge. So queen charge, of course, is critical. Uh, your king and your RC and warden. The RC and warden, honestly, that combination is a game changer. You have to try it. Even if you're not doing this attack, try the RC and warden combined together with your Sui. It's just ridiculous. It really is. And there we have it guys, Queen Charge Rocket Loons, absolutely Rex. Now you don't have to be fully dependent on the Flame Flinger like I am. You could use your Log Launcher to try and create pathing through the base for the Queen Charge to follow. I find that a little bit more hit and miss though, not always the easiest approach. So I think the Flame Flinger is 99 times out of 100 the right way to go with this attack. So anyway guys, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to smash the like button. Also drop a comment to let me know how you get on with this army comp. I'm guaranteeing you that you will do better than maybe you're going to give yourself credit for. And of course, if you don't already, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be made aware when I go live or when I post new videos in the future. I do one or the other pretty much every single day, so there's always fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out.